Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 22. First of all some barrow keeping. Um, only one piece of barrow keeping this week. I plan to film my first site visit in mid-August. This will appear on YouTube when it happens and I'll obviously let you know the details right here. I'm also going to strip the audio if it seems worthwhile and add at least some of it to an episode of the podcast. Anyway, on with the show. Nuthanger Farm. This farm, which is a real farm, still with that name, lying just north of the foot of Watership Down, is the setting of the main interactions between rabbits and humans in the book. Those interactions span the whole range of the relationship between our species and wild animals such as rabbits, from brutality to compassion. It is also the site of the main interaction between rabbits and the Alil, who live with humans, namely cats and dogs. And of course it is because of this, the source of the salvation of the rabbits of Watership Down from the main peril they face from other rabbits during the climax of the story. When I eventually do a site visit there, I really hope to get permission from the current owners to film on site as it would be fascinating to see how it matches up with its portrayals on film and with how it is described in the book. If this is not possible, a public right-of-way passes the farm, in fact the lane to the farm is part of it, so I will be able to get close. For those of you wanting to know the exact road Nuthanger Farm lies on, it is probably what is called a C road, as in the letter C. These, unlike A and B roads, are numbered by county in the UK. The story is now set in Hampshire, after the group crossed the border from Berkshire when they crossed the Enbourne at the start of the story. And this road is the one between Sidmonton and Kingsclear in Hampshire. As you enter Kingsclear from the west, it is called Fox's Lane. I haven't yet been able to find its Hampshire Sea Road number, but its name as it passes Watership Down and Nuthanger Farm seems to be Sidmonton Road. That's S-Y-D-M-O-N-T-O-N, Sidmonton Road. Nuthanger Farm lies up the lane I mentioned that heads north from this road to the north of Watership Down. Chapter 24. Nuthanger Farm. The opening quotation, which seems to be in late Middle English, is a reference to Robin Hood visiting Nottingham in secret, where he is recognised by a monk. As this chapter opens, it is night time, and Hazel is restless. The expedition to the other warren is going well. Kihar has seen off a kestrel using language that would, quote, startle a Cornish harbour a reference to the most independent and remote county in England, one surrounded by sea with a river border with the rest of England. Hazel feels the need for adventure. The reason for this is made explicit as Adams explains his thinking. What Hazel should do is sit tight and wait for the expedition to return, but he seems to be feeling the need to prove himself to all the former Owsler members, and in particular the two, Holly and Silver, who are on the expedition. This is uncharacteristic of Hazel and rather disappointing, I think, His humility has been a hallmark of the strength of his leadership, and here that fails as he lapses into individualism. John Ruth's hit the nail on the head in an email to me about this chapter, in which he pointed out that this lapse is the essence of Hazel's failure here. But a flawed protagonist is surely better than a perfect one, and Hazel does show here that perhaps his ego is something he has to suppress in order to be a good leader. He gets the notion in his head of the expedition returning to find some does already at the Warren. But why? He convinces himself that this would not be an attempt to diminish their efforts, but it seems a bit passive-aggressive at best. His idea is initially to go to the farm where Kihar saw the rabbits being kept in a box and to just scout it out. He decides not to go alone, but to take one other rabbit, a rabbit who who will do as he is told, Pipkin, the most vulnerable rabbit in the group. This has always seemed particularly responsible to me. However, I'm saying that as someone who has never lived under fire, as it were, To continue the military analogy, the rabbits of Warship Down live in a world full of risk, in which all adult rabbits are perhaps expected to take their share of the risk, so what seems irresponsible to a human civilian might well look different from another perspective. Hazel easily convinces Pipkin, who is ever eager to please, to come with him, despite his fear of cats and dogs. They make their way down the scarp slope of the down to where they found Holly and Bluebell, and under the pylon line that runs along the foot of the down, until they reach the road. Hazel feels supremely confident. He asks a rat for directions to the farm. 
the sky is growing lighter. They make their way along a lane heading north from the road to the top of a low rise the farm stands upon. The farm, as it was when the book was written, is described by Adams. It seems to have been developed a bit since then, judging from Google Earth, which isn't surprising. Hazel takes in the smells as they reach the farm. Among these are a lot of cat, less dog, and definitely rabbit. They can see a dog kennel with a large black dog inside, tied up with a rope. Hazel displays a strange awareness of why a rope would be used rather than a chain in order to, pre to prevent the dog making a noise at night. Why would a rabbit understand what a chain is but not a hose? This way of keeping a dog also dates the book. They make their way through the farmyard, becoming more confident as there is no sign of a cat, and following the rabbit smell to a shed in which they find a rabbit hutch. Hazel tells Pipkin to guard their only exit, then speaks with the rabbits in the hutch. There are four of them, both bucks and does. The buck he speaks to is called Boxwood. He and his doe, Haystack, are black and white Himalayan rabbits. The other two, the buck Laurel and doe Clover, are short-haired black angoras. Hazel tells them he wants them to join his warren and take some time describing life in the wild. The doe Clover is particularly interested and asks several questions, but her speech, again, is just reported, not quoted. A doe has still not spoken directly in the book. The hutch rabbits have heard bad things about living in the wild and are going to take some persuasion. Hazel decides to leave, but promises to return. Just then, Pipkin says that a cat has appeared outside in the yard. Hazel displays a deliberate nonchalance, bravado even, about this in front of the hutch rabbits, which contrasts with his usual tactical awareness. He reassures Pipkin and tells him to follow before leaving the shed in plain view of the cat. He tells Pipkin not to run until the cat starts to attack, then deliberately provokes it to do just that with insults. The cat pounces, and they manage to outrun it back to the lane. Hazel says a rabbit can outrun a cat, but only if the atta cat attacks first. This is presumably because they use up too much, e much energy in the attack. He also says they hate to look stupid. As someone who lives with cats, I agree. Their adventure over, Pipkin asks what all this has been about, and Hazel promises to tell him later on. They make their way back to Watership Down, slowly. Thank you to John Ruths for his notes on this chapter, which were useful as always. Next time, the rabbits of Watership Down raid Nuthanger Farm, with horrific consequences. And the expedition returns empty-handed.